reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 11 to the end. Brothers and sisters, put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. In those words to those feisty and factionalized Christians of Corinth, St. Paul once again appeals for peace, order, agreement. It was an uphill battle for Paul. Ever since its first founding days, the Christian community in Corinth was in something of turmoil. There were factions and divisions. There was competition. There were constant arguments about what was important and what wasn't. The words we hear today are from his second letter to the Corinthians, and they are the final words we have to them from St. Paul. Paul was exhausted from trying to build up a decent community of love, joy, peace, and mutual support. And we don't know, actually, if the, if the Corinthians ever did settle down to a fruitful and joyful common life together. We can be grateful to those Corinthians and to St. Paul and to the early church for preserving these letters for us. As we read about struggles of the first Christians at Corinth, we appreciate more fully the challenges for us as Christians. If we had a Bible full of simplistic stories, which read like fairy tales, in which there's no real conflict and everyone always lives happily ever after, we would not find in the Bible a source of hope and strength as we face the difficult and distressing issues of our own day. On this Trinity Sunday, as we remember God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, as we remember the unity and the diversity within God himself, we are reminded that we are called as Christians to live in communion, in community, and in communication, both with God and with the people around us. Just as the Corinthians struggled to live well together and struggled to live well according to the teachings of Jesus, we find ourselves in similar struggles. What we need to be careful of, in my view, is that we don't restrict ourselves to thinking that it is simply enough for us to live at peace within our own little bubble. It is pretty easy to set up a situation in which we can live happily with the people around us. We just need to set up a kind of gated community. We let in only the people we like, only the people who are like us, who think like us, who look like us, and don't challenge anything about the way we think or live. There are churches who do just that and who take the gospel not as a challenge to live boldly and openly and inclusively, but rather use it to create a special identity for themselves, which they use as a weapon against those who are different. That is not the gospel of Jesus. There is also the risk that when we read these words, put things in order, agree with one another, live in peace, that we might take these words as a command never to protest, never to express disagreement, and to simply go with the flow. And whatever you do, don't make waves, don't disturb the status quo. St. Paul is not arguing for that either. The prophet Ezekiel warns in the Old Testament, do not shout peace, peace, when there is no peace. He warns against those false prophets who prop up the status quo of oppression and injustice merely for the sake of order and so as not to disturb those in power. Peace is not the absence of disagreement. Peace is not everyone just going along with things. 
true peace only comes when there is true justice. And if there was ever a person in history who did not simply go with the flow, or who refused to prop up the status quo, that person is Jesus. On this Trinity Sunday, when we remember God's invitation to live in communion, in community, in communication, we are reminded that living together is hard work. It takes from each of us a commitment to call one another brothers and sisters, and to see them in our hearts truly as brothers and sisters. It takes from each one of us a commitment to listen, to understand, and to communicate in ways which are respectful and honourable. It takes from each of us a good dose of humility an openness to admit when we get it wrong, both as individuals and as societies. And it takes from us a commitment to let go of our privilege and to work for the true common good of all people. We are in a period of upheaval in our world, and perhaps that's true of every age. But this is the time in which we live. So this is the time that we need to be concerned with. People are angry, people are frustrated, people are disappointed. We have, over these past decades, seen the haves get even more and use their power to increase their wealth. And we have seen the have-nots silenced, ignored, manipulated and treated with disrespect. And in many, many cases, the line between the haves and the have-nots has to do with the colour of our skin. Paul's final words to the Corinthians today serve as a challenge to us not to retreat into a happy bubble. They serve as a challenge to us to open our eyes and really see the plight of the many people around us, the many people who are treated with less dignity, with less respect, and who have less opportunity to grow and flourish simply because of the colour of their skin or their ethnic backgrounds. This is true in the US, it is true in the UK, and it is true in Italy. So let us not pray that the protest will stop, but let us pray that it will be peaceful and effective and that we can learn something and that we can learn to listen and to make the necessary changes. And let us each be part of the process which undoes the systems of privilege for the haves and let us work for true communion, true communication, true community, as we seek to live out our Christian calling to show forth in our own lives the peace and the justice and the mercy of God. Amen. So may I wish you a day full of joy, a joy, a day full of fellowship, a day full of community, communication, and communion with God and with one another. Amen. Amen.